So, I haven't posted any videos in a while. I spent the last four months in the Middle East fixing airplanes. And it's not really a place to be taking videos and smoking cigars and drinking alcohol in a country that you're not allowed to consume alcohol in. Now we're back. We have a bunch of shit to do. Like, finish putting the transmission in this old Ford. I also got a bunch of parts on order for, I have three 351 Clevelands and one Boss 302 clone or a cleaver build that maybe we're going to throw together in one of these episodes. We will haphazardly run around all sorts of different projects and they'll be very hard to keep track of, so do your best.
well, they pretty well kicked my ass tonight. Transmission's actually bolted up to the truck, um, but despite measuring, and then measuring again, and then trying to measure again a few more times, uh, the original plan was to take my cross member from the transmission and turn it around, and that was supposed to give me those couple inches that I needed in order to get the transmission to sit down right back in that cross member and not have to drill new holes or find a different cross member. As you can see, it didn't work out like that. But the new 11 inch clutch is in. Uh, I replaced the 10 inch clutch. New throwout bearing. We did a new rear main seal because it had some oil leaking out of there anyway, so might as well. If you noticed on the on the flywheel bolts, I put not red Loctite, but it's actually a sealant uh, on the crankshaft. And then if you're really paying attention, there's a plate that goes between the motor and the transmission. It's uh, sometimes called a starter indexing plate. Um, sometimes it's just called a motor spacing plate. They got a hundred different names for it. I forgot that, and so after I got done filming, before I put this transmission in, I looked over there and there's a plate, not installed, and so I had to take the clutch back off, had to take the flywheel back off, put the indexing plate back on, or put it on, and then uh, put the flywheel back on and put the clutch back on, and then I can proceed with the transmission. The uh, ZF6 was considerably heavier than what the 3-speed is, but I guess it makes sense because we're going from a 3-speed to a 5-speed. Did I say ZF6? ZF5 is considerably heavier than the 3-speed we took out. As you saw, hopefully earlier before, the little 3-speed was easy just to shove off the stand and pull on out, where that ZF5 was a wrestling match the entire way. Uh, really glad I had the interior ripped out of the truck so I could hang a 4x4 post and use that with a rope around the transmission to help suspend the front of the transmission so I could get the transmission jack maneuvered onto it. Didn't quite have the truck jacked up, but my jack stands were already maxed out, and so I really wasn't interested in playing any more games with trying to make the truck higher. So I just dealt with it how I could. It worked out. Not the greatest, but it worked out. So, hopefully here soon and figure out my cross member issue. I may end up just drilling the frame. I really didn't want to, but I may end up just re-drilling the frame and moving the cross member back a couple inches. But we'll see. Maybe I'll get lucky and find something cool. So, I guess rather than being bitter about it, just have a scar and a glass of scotch. Until next time, cheers.